sincerely believe that it was just the wrong place, wrong time. Something happened while she was wandering around trying to gather her thoughts and calm herself. There are a lot of bad people in the world and you hear about stories that happen out there and I think it's one of those stories that you hear and it actually happened here at home in our own neighborhood. Police are looking for whoever killed 22-year-old Angela Brasso. It's been more than four months since 17-year-old Melanie Burness was found murdered. Both victims were young females. She was found decapitated two days ago in a field near her apartment on 25th Avenue in Cactus. Brasso had gone for her evening bicycle ride Sunday night and never returned. To think that somebody who has killed in that fashion, uh, that there weren't other crimes related to this, uh, is uh, unlikely. Did you think this could be the guy? I did. to the Arizona Republic in 1990 after retiring from my high school principal job. They said, well, welcome to the news department, but everybody who starts here does night cops. Night cops means you show up at three in the afternoon and you're there till midnight. You are out on the streets with a police scanner and going to one crime after another, one thing after another breaking news for the newspaper. My best estimate is I was at more than 500 homicides. I had to be, because I, I would sometimes in a night be at three homicides. The death, the, the, sh the killing rate was much higher in those days. That was a violent time. Shoot him up, yeah. What was Sunny Slope like in the 90s? There was a certain reputation of some biker bars and uh, people living in sort of corn desert houses where they were cooking up a little methamphetamine. The police refer to it as the slope. Sunny Slope had its share of shootings and killings and in some of those biker bars they'd really get into it. Two-year-old Angela Brasso took off from her Northwest Phoenix apartment around 7 o'clock last night for a bike ride. Angela never came home, and her boyfriend called police. What do you know about Angela Brasso, just in, you know, in general terms before this happened? That she led a blameless life, was a good employee where she worked. She was just a very nice young woman hoping to build a new life who had a nice boyfriend. She went out that night and didn't come back, called to the police, they're looking, and it's not until the next day that her body is found. 
Her normal uh, uh, routine was to be gone approximately an hour, an hour and a half to complete the circuit. Was I on night police then? I was on night police then, I guess. And I came in early and I went out there. And I found Detective Leo Speliopoulos being pretty tight-lipped. But what we knew is there was a body. Well, the body uh, is, is decapitated. It looked like somebody had, had taken a knife to this person. Yeah, and because her breasts had fallen to the side of her body, completely cut open, and her head gone, and by accounts quickly, with an extraordinarily sharp blade. There are multiple injuries which our homicide detectives do not want to discuss at this point. That is other than the decapitation. And this was extraordinary in its horror, you know. Who would do a thing like this and, and do what he did to the body? There is no head and there's no sign of Angela's bike. Several days went by and no head. And then, just a few days later, a guy who hung around the canal, a neighborhood eccentric, and he was walking along and he looked up at one of those grates in the canal and what did he see? He saw a head. We went over there and uh, from a distance it didn't look like, it didn't look real. We were back and forth uh, in and out of this canal for some three days. Uh, so it's difficult to tell how long the head was in the canal. I quickly found out that the head was in amazingly good shape. So what does that mean? It was in a refrigerator, it had been cooled and preserved during that time. But he had the guts to go to the canal and throw it in, just like he had the guts to be out where anyone could have seen him pull her off her bike and do what he did. One of the things that one of the detectives said to me, count on it, this guy's gonna do something like this again. And then it, it goes almost a year and nothing. I think I got a call to just go out to the canal bank. There was Leo, you know, and I, I walked up and I said, what do you got? And he said, well, we had a body in the canal with some real damage done to the chest area. I said, now tell me this, got the bicycle? Nope. And I said, so we got the same guy. He said, we're not jumping to conclusions. The brutal death of Melanie Burness made it a very difficult, emotional day for fellow students at Arcadia High. It was pretty sorrowful. There's people going around crying. There's a lot of counseling going on. I'm so confused. I, I really want to know, like, why, you know? Both victims were young females. Both were stabbed in the upper torso. They were killed while on evening bike rides. The bicycles of both victims were taken. Neither bike has been recovered. The bicycles are missing. Trophies. The killer takes something. Takes something that he gets off looking at. The talisman, a thing that symbolizes it. And in the case of Angela, it was her head, for God's sake, as well as the bicycle. What did that tell you about the person who was responsible for this? Seriously insane, insanely confident of his mission to kill young women. Were there any other cases that you could remember at, from that point or that police were thinking of at that point that this could have been connected to because of the manner and nature of the death? We all did our homework pretty quickly and there wasn't anything that readily came to mind at that time. Right now, five other states are investigating similar decapitation murders involving women. As a matter of fact, the police were quickly looking at international cases. They thought somebody might have come in from outside the country. Could have been. They were looking at a guy in Paris, uh, at a surgeon, as a matter of fact. At that time, did you think police were going to solve this case? Absolutely. They were, they were absorbed in it. Yeah, I was sure they were going to solve it. And then? Nothing. And there were people who just kept working on it and would return to it. But, but nothing, and I kept returning to it. Three years later, I said, anything new on Bernus Brasso? No. For kind of self-preservation for people in the news when you're at homicides, you've got to wash your brain out a little bit, because if you take it home with you, you're not going to last long, just as with police. 
And so I found ways to cope with that. But this one got to me. These two innocent, decent human beings who out of the blue were taken away. No reason, no reason. They were just in the wrong place at the wrong time where a crazy man was. Police detectives were able to obtain a DNA sample from the suspect just last week. I need your full name and date of birth, please. Brian Patrick Miller. Within literally hours, we had a hit from those two murders, scientifically linking him by DNA to those two murders over 20 years ago. Miller now charged with the 1992 kidnapping and murder of 22-year-old Angela Barrasso and the 1993 kidnapping and murder of 17-year-old Melanie Barnes. He dressed in this zombie hunter kind of cyberpunk outfit. He's with the people from The Walking Dead. It's that ironic, Walking Dead TV show, Dawn of the Dead movies. They say his pride and joy seemed to be this car, a police interceptor he bought and re-decaled to say zombie hunter. He took the zombie hunter to car shows, used it in photo shoots, and it was sometimes splattered with fake blood. remember where you were when you heard that he had been arrested? I was at work. I was on break at work. I've not, I can't remember a time when I was actually speechless, and that was one of them. I said, my God, I think my, they're accusing my friend of being a serial killer. You want to be referred to as Brian Miller's former friend? Preferably. I can assume I know the answer to that question, but, but why do you say former? You know, life goes on, I have to go on with my life, and, but also uh, Brian Miller himself kind of abruptly ended our friendship. Really? Yeah, while he was in jail. Did you ask him if he did it? I, I, I was on eggshells at first because I didn't want to ask him that. I didn't pry into the canal murders. That was an open investigation I knew better than to ask. He was one of the few, uh, and I'd say he's probably my best friend in, in the state since I moved here. Until truth comes out, yeah. if he's listening, you know, we're, we're standing by you. Inside the home, belongings piled floor to ceiling, all now being hauled out by investigators. I had, I had, and I had only realized how bad these conditions were after he was arrested. We, me and a group of friends went to his house to salvage whatever personal effects of his we could. It was only then when I realized how much of a problem that he had had with hoarding. Whenever I was at his house before he was arrested, it was, we were only allowed access to certain parts of the house. Did he ever come off to you as someone who was an expert with a blade? Uh, I would not say an expert with a blade. He had blades. Um, uh, I wouldn't say he was a knife guy or a, you know, a weapon guy, but they were around. You know, um. Was he inquisitive? How do you describe what he was like? I would say he was... Hmm. 
Bitter. Bitter. Yeah. He had issues with uh, women and how they respond to his actions. And it really, really burnt him. I think it really, you know, boiled inside him. How do you come to grips with the real possibility that a guy who was one of your very close friends is a serial killer? I don't know if you do. Um... To think that somebody who has killed in that fashion, uh, that there weren't other crimes related to this uh, is uh, unlikely. This is where I last saw Brandy. She was a slow learner, so she had that naiveness to her. Um, she was older than me, but it, it was like she was younger, or I was the big sister. Our apartment was this corner one. And I watched her walk around this corner, and that was the last time I ever saw her. She was last seen two doors down from Brian's house, walking in the direction of his house. She really walked three blocks and lost her life. Her case is considered solved but not resolved. We know who killed her. We know every detail. We know why we didn't get her body back. We know the color of the trash bag. I know what happened. How do you know what happened? I know because in 2015, I finally got the call. We know what happened to Brandy. They tell me about Brian Patrick Miller, AKA Canal Killer. I know everything I know today because when he was arrested, connected to Angela Brasso, Melanie Bernas, and the Canal Killings, his ex-wife came forward and told the police about these stories he would tell her. And one of these stories was a confession about killing my sister. I've been to this house, I've looked in the windows, I've put my hands on this building. Here is our school, and so this is one block from our school, his home, and then three blocks is our house. So every single day, we walked right by here and back and forth to school. We pass this house every day. What did the ex-wife say happened to her? He told her that a girl with special needs or mentally handicapped had knocked at her door doing some sort of fundraising. And he felt like this was a good opportunity to act. So he pulled her in the house, um, began st stabbing her. She was alive for all of that. Then he slit her throat and that's what killed her. Neighbors began to complain about a smell. He realized he needed to get rid of her pretty quickly. So he dismembered her, put her in black trash bags and stored her in his trash can in the house until the next day when the trash ran. So Brandy went to the landfill like something of no importance. And she's been there for 29 years. He's a monster. He's an absolute monster.
I do not understand how one branch of the government, which is the Phoenix Police Department, they can solve a crime, conclude it, and then there are no official charges. We have a missing girl in the neighborhood and within three blocks, neighbors are complaining about a house that smells like death. How did that get missed? I don't know. I cannot, I cannot explain that. And it, it's frustrating to me. I, I believe, you know, there was a canvas done. I believe Brian Miller was spoken to at the time. I believe Randy was in his bathtub when they were at his door speaking to him. Did he, did he ever say anything to you about Brandy Myers? Did he ever admit that he had anything to do with? Uh, he told me that, um, that he remembers when they were searching for her. And it was a long time ago, but for some reason he remembers them searching for her. Let's get to the point when you started thinking maybe he had something to do with Adrian Salinas's disappearance and murder. In 1994, investigators believe Brian Miller left Arizona and moved to Everett, Washington. Everett was known as a very rough town. The assault happened just before school yesterday morning. The 14-year-old girl was apparently on her way to school at Cascade High School. I looked over my shoulder and I saw a tall, dark shadow come out of the brush and onto the trail. We found another unsolved murder with some striking similarities. The victim was a woman. Her body was mutilated and she was found in a river. Authorities will not say how the woman died. Investigators say the 37-year-old woman who lived here alone was last seen alive on Wednesday. Officially reported missing yesterday, this morning deputies found a body matching her description in the ankle-deep water along the river's edge. It's just so maddening that whoever did it has been free for this long. They killed my sister. 